with some basic ingredients such as flour, sugar, milk, and eggs, you can make yourself one or more treats, like this one. In chemistry, the ingredients are known as the reactants, and the delicious treats at the end are known as the products. Directly between the ingredients and the products, there's a lovely arrow that points towards the right, and that indicates the direction of chemical reaction. You know, I bought this cake just for this intro. The reactants, arrow, and products are used to describe a chemical reaction in a form known as a word equation. The ingredients of a chemical reaction are always placed on the left side of the arrow, and you can have one or more products placed on the right. Let's go through a few examples. When you ignite magnesium, the magnesium will react with the oxygen in the air to form a white powdery substance called magnesium oxide. Let's describe this chemical reaction using a word equation. Magnesium and oxygen are the ingredients or reactants of the chemical reaction, so we place them on the left side of the arrow. The final product, magnesium oxide, is placed on the right. We can also represent the basic chemical structure of this reaction using a skeletal equation. A skeletal equation describes the chemical reaction using chemical symbols instead of words. For example, we replace the magnesium with its symbol Mg, and we replace oxygen with its symbol O. Remember that oxygen is a diatomic molecule, meaning that it's an element that will never be lonely. That's why if oxygen has no one else to pair with, it will pair with itself. Next, using the periodic table, we see that magnesium has a charge of plus 2, and oxygen has a charge of minus 2. Crossing over these two charges results in a 2 to 2 ratio that can be reduced down to a 1 to 1 ratio. And that's it for a skeletal equation. Keep in mind that in a skeletal equation, the quantities of each element are not correct. We see that we started off with two oxygens, but somehow finished off with just one oxygen. And that's not physically possible. When you bake a cake, if your cake mix weighs 2 pounds, then your cake should still weigh 2 pounds when it's done. To fix this problem, let's move on to the next chapter. Here we have the number 2 written in superscript. Numbers written here indicate the charge of an atom, or molecule. And here we have the number 2 written in subscript. Numbers written here indicate the quantity of the atom listed to the left. In this case, O2 describes two oxygen atoms. The 6 placed at the front of this molecule is known as the coefficient. This tells the chemist that 6 molecules of carbon dioxide are needed in an experiment. Let's practice through a few atom counting examples. CH4 is a molecule of methane. Methane contains 1 carbon and 4 hydrogens. AlNO33 is the polyatomic compound aluminum nitrate. Aluminum nitrate contains one aluminum, and remember the three out here is telling the reader that we need three times the quantity of what's needed inside the brackets. Sometimes it helps to expand the formula to visually see how many atoms are needed. So we have one AL and three sets of nus. In the expanded format, we count three nitrogens and a total of nine oxygens. Of course, no scientist will understand you if you call this compound Al Nu Nu Nu. Remember, this expanded format just helps us in our understanding. Here's another one. The 4 in the front tells us that we need 4 of this watery molecule. Yeah, that was a terrible pun. Not punny at all. So this recipe requires a total of 8 hydrogens and 4 oxygens. With enough practice, it is not necessary to write the expanded format. Instead, we can use basic math and multiply 4 by 2 to get ourselves 8 hydrogens and multiply 4 by that invisible one to get 4 oxygens. How about you try the next one out yourself? Here we see a grand total of 2 carbons, a total of 7 oxygens, and 6 hydrogens. The plus sign in the middle just reminds us that our recipe requires two separate ingredients. Here's one more example. This chemical equation tells us that we need to have a total of 2 times 3, which is 6 calciums. 1 times 2 times 2. 
which is 4 phosphorus, and 4 times 2 times 2, which is 16 oxygens. Of course, you can write out this equation in its expanded format and then say it out loud. And you thought plumbum was the funniest word in chemistry. The foundation of a chemical reaction relies upon the law of conservation of matter. Although matter can change states, it cannot be created or destroyed. In a chemical reaction, the total mass of the reactants always equals the total mass of the products. For example, if a simple cake recipe requires two large eggs as part of its ingredients, you know the whole cake will contain a total of two eggs after it's done baking. Here are the basic steps in balancing chemical reactions. Step 1. Write the word equation of the reaction. We'll use the earlier example of magnesium reacting with oxygen. Step 2. Write the skeletal equation of the reaction. So write out the chemical symbols of each stable compound. Step 3. Count the number of atoms of each element on both sides and write the appropriate coefficient, such that the quantity of each element is the same on both sides. There's a bit of trial and error here. If we take a look at our example, we see that we have no choice but to start off with two oxygens on the left side of the equation. So we'll write in pencil the number 1 as the coefficient for oxygen gas. On the right side, we see that there's only one oxygen so far. We cannot write the 2 below the O to fix the problem, as we know that magnesium oxide is only stable with one magnesium binding with one oxygen. To fix this, we'll just add another magnesium oxide to the party. Of course, writing down the 2 does cause a domino effect. Sure, the 2 indicates that we'll have two oxygens at the end, but it also means that we'll have two magnesiums as well. To fix that, we'll place the 2 at the beginning of the reaction. Step 4. Verify that the quantity of each atom is the same on both sides. On a separate piece of paper, or in your head, create a tally chart of all the atoms involved in the chemical reaction. Here we started off with two magnesiums and a pair of oxygens. Cover your answers on the left, and tally a count of all the atoms on the right. Here we have two magnesiums and two oxygens. Remove your hand and see if the numbers match up. Now give yourself a high five. Since balancing chemical reactions is quite challenging when you're new at it, let's practice through a few more problems. If you don't know where to start, just start with one at the beginning. However, you may need an eraser later on if your assumption is wrong. If we assume one aluminum at the beginning, we will need one aluminum at the end. Placing a one at the beginning also affects the quantity of chlorines. So if we have a triplet of chlorines at the beginning, we'll need three chlorines at the end. Placing the three at the end also forces the count of potassium to also be at three. So we'll need three potassiums at the beginning. Lastly, double check your work. One aluminum at the beginning, one aluminum at the end. A triplet of chlorines at the beginning, three chlorines at the end. Three potassiums at the beginning, three potassiums at the end. Three nitrogens at the beginning, three nitrogens at the end. Three times three, which is nine oxygens at the beginning, and three times three, which is nine oxygens at the end. All looks good. On to the next problem. Often it is inefficient to assume one at the beginning if you notice certain restrictions. For example, take a look at the iodines in the middle. The iodine on the left can only increment in triplets, so if your coefficient is one, total iodine count is three. If the coefficient is two, total iodine count is six, so on and so forth. The iodines on the right can only increment in pairs, so the total count of iodine will either be two, four, six, eight, and so on. For efficiency, we will always look at the lowest common multiple. In this case, the lowest common multiple of two and three is six. So we'll place a two here and a three here. You can probably guess how many times an eraser will have to be used if we tried this out by trial and error. So with the two and three set as our final answers, two aluminums at the beginning means two aluminums at the end, and three leads at the end mean three leads at the beginning. Pause this video and double check our work. Does it look correct? Good. Next problem. If you take a look at the total number of oxygens on the left, 
since oxygen comes in pairs, your final answer will always be even. Meanwhile, on the right, depending upon which coefficient you place in front of H2O, total oxygen count can either be even or odd. To ensure an even count of oxygen, we'll place a coefficient of 2 in front of H2O. Alright, let's continue from this first assumption. Since the total hydrogen has to be 4, we'll need two pairs of hydrogen at the beginning. This also forces the total oxygen at the beginning to be at 4, so we'll need 4 oxygens at the end, and it looks like it's going to be spread up. There will be two oxygens here, and another pair of oxygens placed over here, giving a total of 4. Pause this video and double check our work. Does it look correct? Let's try out one more. Through enough practice, you'll notice that these type of problems will always start with a coefficient of 2. But since this is your first time through, we'll assume a value of 1. This makes 2 carbons at the beginning, meaning 2 carbons at the end. 6 hydrogens at the beginning means 3 pairs of hydrogens at the end. Now let's see how many oxygens we need at the beginning. We have a count of 4 oxygens over here, and 3 oxygens over here. Uh oh. 4 plus 3 equals an odd number, but we need to have an even pair of oxygens. What to do? Well, think about it this way. What's double of 1? An even number. What's the double of 2? Still an even number. What's the double of 3? Yet another even number. You see the pattern here? If we double the coefficients, we can guarantee an even quantity of oxygen. So let's erase all the coefficients and start with the even number 2. 2 times 2 is 4 carbons at the beginning, and we'll have 4 carbons at the end. 2 times 6 are 12 hydrogens at the beginning, and we'll need 6 pairs of hydrogens at the end. For the oxygens, this gives us a grand total of 8 plus 6, which is 14. So then we'll need 7 pairs of oxygens at the beginning. I hope that this provides enough examples for you to get a head start in your homework. And as usual, work through every problem in your homework and compare your answers with the answer key. If there are any problems that you are unsure of how to solve, please ask your teacher, a tutor, or a loving family member for help. Study well, and I'll see you in the next episode.